Today, we'll be diving into one of the most chilling and mysterious events in history known as the Dyatlov Pass Incident. In 1959, a group of nine hikers embarked on a trek in the Ural Mountains of the Soviet Union. What transpired during that journey has become one of the world's enduring unsolved mysteries. Welcome to As Told by Bells, where mysteries unfold, the bizarre becomes reality, and strange stories come to life. I'm Bells, your guide into the world of the unexplained. Every Sunday, we'll delve into unsolved mysteries that continue to baffle and tell so bizarre you won't believe they actually happened. To stay in the loop with every captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single episode of these extraordinary stories we're about to unravel. Now let the storytelling begin. In 1959, a group of experienced hikers embarked on a trek to reach the summit of a Torten mountain in the northern Urals of the Soviet Union. It was meant to be a 14-day expedition to reach a Torten mountain, but it turned into one of the most mysterious and tragic events in the history of outdoor exploration. The trip was planned and led by Igor Dyatlov, a 23-year-old student of radio engineering at the Euro Polytechnical Institute. The expedition included a group of 10 students in total. The group consisted of eight men and two women. The hikers were Igor Dyatlov, he was 23 years old. Denida Komogorova, she was 22 years old. Ludmila Dubanina was the youngest of the group. She was 20 years old. Alexander Kalevatov was 24 years old. The hikers celebrated his birthday on January 30, just two days before the tragic events unfolded. The poignant gift he received on that day was a tangerine, which was shared generously among friends creating a bittersweet memory before their fateful expedition. Rustim Slobodin was 23 years old. Yuri Kravinyshenko was 23 years old. Yuri Doroshenko was 21 years old. Nikolai Thibault Brignolel was 23 years old. Semyon Zolotayev was 38 years old. He was the eldest member of the group. Yuri Yudin was 21 years old. He was the sole survivor. Now let's jump into the chilling and mysterious event of the Dyatlov Pass incident. The group was originally comprised of 10 students. In the days leading up to the expedition, the Dyatlov Pass group was generally excited and well-prepared for their adventure. They were enthusiastic about the journey and looked forward to the challenges and camaraderie. The group took a train to Ivdel, the city closest to their intended destination. From there, they continued by truck to Vize, a small settlement that marked the beginning of their trek into the Ural Mountains. It was there that Yuri Yudin experienced an illness and chose to leave the group and head back home. It was that decision that ended up saving his life. The group was in high spirits during this time and there were no indications of any issues or changes in plans. On January 27, the rest of the group continued their journey by foot up the mountain. Diaries and cameras found around their last camp made it possible to track the group's route up to the day preceding the incident. According to the journal entries on February 1st, the hikers made their way out late in the day. The route they had chosen had been remarkably difficult, even for them. They walked two and a half miles just before pitching their tent on a slope of Kalat Sayako, just 10 miles away from Mount Otorten, where they were headed. Kalat Sayako means dead mountain in the local Manzi language. When the hikers failed to report back, 
a search and rescue team was dispatched. What they discovered was both perplexing and horrifying. The search party eventually discovered the hikers' abandoned campsite. The tent was found with slash marks suggesting a frenzied escape. The tent was cut open from the inside, and despite the freezing temperatures, which were between negative 13 and negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, the hikers had fled without proper clothing or shoes. Sets of footprints seemingly made by bare feet without any socks or shoes on were also found around the campsite. The footprints led to the edge of the nearby woods about a mile from the tent. Here is the sequence of events and the order in which the students were found. Yuri Doroshenko was found on February 27, 1959, in a forested area by a cedar tree at the bottom of a small slope. Doroshenko was only wearing underwear and socks. His body showed signs of abrasions and he had a small crack in his skull. However, his cause of death was determined to be hypothermia. Yuri Kravinoshenko was found on February 27 near Doroshenko by the cedar tree. He was dressed in more layers than Doroshenko, but still not adequately for the harsh weather. Kravinoshenko had more severe external injuries, including a fractured skull. The medical examiner recorded liver mortis on the back but Kravinoshenko was found facing up. Liver mortis is the process where blood accumulates in the lower region of the body's blood vessels due to gravity, leading to a change in skin color ranging from pink to deep purple. This indicated that someone had moved them after their death. The cause of death was determined to be hypothermia. The next bodies found were Igor Dyatlov, the group leader. He was found on February 27th, 300 meters from the cedar tree. Dyatlov was better dressed than the others, but still not adequately for the extreme cold. His official cause of death was hypothermia. Zenaida Komogorova was discovered on February 27, about 630 meters from the cedar tree where the last four hikers were found. She was in a better state compared to the first three, wearing more clothes. Zenaida's cause of death was hypothermia. Rustin Slobodin was found on March 5th in a ravine between the cedar tree and the tent. He had a fractured skull and other injuries, indicating a severe impact. However, he was also determined to have died from hypothermia. The three seemed to have died in poses, suggesting that they were attempting to return to the tent. Then things got even stranger and more sinister. It took more than two months to find the remaining four travelers. They were discovered away from the rest, but buried in a ravine roughly about 100 yards away from the campsite. Ludmila Dubanina was found on May 5th in a ravine between the cedar tree and the camp. Dubanina's injuries were particularly gruesome, including a missing tongue, eyes, parts of the lips, facial tissue, and a chest fracture. Officials determined her death to be caused by massive hemorrhage and internal bleeding as a result of violence. Alexander Kolevatov was found on May 5th. Kolevatov's body had no broken bones or post-mortem damage at all. He was also determined to have died from hypothermia. Simeon Zolotyov was found May 5th near Ludmila Dubanina. He had severe chest fractures and internal injuries. He had major chest fractures that can only have been caused by an immense force comparable to that of a car crash. Zolotyov was better dressed than some of the others, wearing Dubanina's faux fur coat. The official cause of death was internal bleeding as a result of violence. Nikolai the Beau Brignolel was found on May 5th. He suffered significant skull damage in the moments before his death. It was believed that his head injury was the cause of death. The second group of bodies suggested that the hikers had died at different times 
as they appeared to have been making use of the clothes of their fellow hikers. Dubonina's foot was wrapped in a piece of Kravinashenko's wool pants, and Zolotayev was found in Dubonina's coat and hat. Several of the bodies had low levels of radiation surrounding them. The circumstances surrounding their death and the condition of their bodies contributed to the enduring mystery of the Dyatlov Pass incident. A preliminary investigation concluded in May of 1959 and was placed in the Soviet Union secret archives. The official word was that a compelling natural force had caused the deaths, but understandably that raised more questions than answers. Though the Diatla Pass incident has never been officially solved, there are a multitude of theories about what could have happened to the hikers. The Special Forces Theory One prevailing theory suggests that Soviet Special Forces were involved in a top-secret mission on the mountain that night, leading to the alleged murder of the hikers who inadvertently witnessed something they shouldn't have. However, this version of the theory is often regarded as implausible by skeptics, primarily because the original search parties never reported discovering unusual footprints in the area. It is noteworthy that the footprints found were not closely examined, but their limited number, nine sets, indicated they likely belonged to the hikers. Despite the lack of substantial evidence supporting this claim, the theory persists, fueled by the inherent secrecy surrounding Soviet intelligence agencies during that period. The Western Spy Theory This theory suggests that American and European spies in the Soviet Union faced challenges due to suspicion by Stalin's secret police. To overcome this, Western spies may have recruited members of the Dyatlov group, such as Zolotayev and Kravinyshenko, to deliver fabricated proof of nuclear activity. Kravinyshenko's background in a nuclear facility made him a plausible recruit, and Zolotayev, with military experience, served as a backup. The theory centers on the radioactive traces on Kravinyshenko's clothing, implying a rendezvous with Western agents who posed as lost tourists. However, the theory faces challenges. The severity and nature of the injuries sustained by the final four hikers defy conventional explanations, with some experts suggesting the unlikely involvement of humans. Despite its apparent logic, this theory leaves notable gaps in its overall coherence. The criminal theory. The theory suggests that political prisoners who escaped gulags might have been hiding in the Ural Mountains during the Dyatlov Group's hike. Proponents speculate that an encounter with such a fugitive led to the hiker's murder to protect the escapee's secret. A peculiar piece of evidence, an abmaki or puti, discovered by Yuri Yudin at the site, adds intrigue as it did not belong to any group member. However, this theory faces challenges, including the atypical injuries sustained by the final hikers and the lack of concrete evidence indicating the presence of other humans at the scene. The Manzi Theory While largely discredited by contemporary investigators, some still contend that Manzi tribes people are responsible for the Diatlov group's death. However, this theory loses credibility upon considering that Kalat Sayako is not considered sacred by the Manzi. Rather, it is feared and generally avoided. The mountain's traditional name even translates to Death Mountain. Moreover, skeptics argue that if the Manzi were accountable, they would likely have taken all available supplies from the campsite. Given the harsh conditions of survival in the Ural Mountains, the decision to abandon a wealth of supplies appears illogical. The Avalanche Theory Some suggest that an avalanche caused the Dyatlov group's demise. Despite the mountain's modest height, their diaries mention thin snow cover. 
While this doesn't rule out a small avalanche hitting the tent, forcing them to cut their way out, advocates propose that the survivors avoided the tent, fearing another avalanche. However, challenges arise as footprints indicate a voluntary descent and experienced hikers will likely prioritize retrieving belongings over avalanche fears. Moreover, images of the tent reveal that its poles remain partially vertical with only the middle part collapsing, showing no signs of being crushed in an avalanche. The UFO theory. This is where the narrative takes a peculiar turn. Certain conspiracy theories assert that a UFO frightened the group to such an extent that they hastily abandoned their tent and steadfastly refused to return. Although seemingly far-fetched, there might be some evidence supporting these claims. Several geologists working 70 kilometers from Kalat Seyako claim to have seen these orbs in the evening of February 1st, the night of the Dyatlov tragedy. Also, rescue parties and military operations involved in the search for the hikers were reported to have witnessed mysterious orbs in the sky above the site throughout the search efforts. Lev Ivanov, the head of the original Dyatlov Pass investigation, alleged that members of the Soviet Congress compelled him to expunge any mention of UFO involvement from his official report. The Soviet officials dismissed it as pseudoscience at the time. The Yeti theory. The Yeti theory suggests that a Yeti or a similar creature was responsible for the mysterious deaths of the hikers. This theory is based on Manzi folklore, which speaks of hostile humanoid creatures called Menfi or Yeti inhabiting the Ural Mountains. According to legends, Menfi are malevolent beings that survived a great flood unleashed by gods as punishment for their hostility towards humans. Some Manzi tribes people assisting in the search for the Dyatlov group believe that a Menkvi might have caused the deaths, pointing to prior attacks on caribou and reindeer in the area with damaged internal organs. While the Yeti theory adds a sensational element to the narrative, it lacks substantial evidence and is not likely accepted by investigators or experts. The legacy. The enigma surrounding the Dyatlov group tragedy remains an unresolved case. Shortly after the incident, the pass where the group met their fate in 1959 was renamed Dyatlov Pass in honor of Igor Dyatlov. Presently, hikers venture along the trail meant for the ill-fated group's journey. In the early 2000s, a supervised expedition involving nine hikers found it relatively easy to maintain close contact and navigate the mountainside, even under snow cover and the shroud of night. All nine hikers were eventually laid to rest. Seven rest in a communal grave regularly adorned with flowers and candles, but for unknown reasons, Simeon Zolotyov and Yuri Kravinyshenko are buried separately in a cemetery now closed to the public. In 1999, the Dyatlov Foundation was established with the support of the Euro State Technical University. The foundation's objectives include continuing the investigation into the tragedy and maintaining the Dyatlov Museum to commemorate the victims. On July 1st, 2016, a memorial plaque was unveiled in the Perm region of the Ural Mountains, dedicated to Yuri Yudin, who passed away in 2013 at the age of 75, never learning the fate of his friends. The case continues to captivate intense interests, both with Russia and internationally, often referred to as Russia's Kennedy assassination due to the multitude of conspiracy theories and enduring obsession. In 2019, the Russian Federation officially reopened the investigation. However, no updates have emerged from this initiative so far.